expected you or you were invited to come up and say something. And, and it was one of those moments <laughs> where you're like, is this a church service or is this the White House? And it actually became both. I'm James Robinson talking to Jensen Franklin. I'm going to talk about something that happened in the White House that was basically unbelievable. And uh, I was seated at a table next to the president and to Melania. Uh, Franklin Graham and Jensen Franklin and Harry Jackson were sitting at the table with uh, the president. And uh, there were probably 125 people there. Jensen, would you say something like that, leaders? Mm -hmm. The president of Hobby Lobby was there. Of course, Ben Carson was there. Other cabinet members were there. The vice president was there. The family of the president was there. And uh, Robert Morris said something to you earlier that day when we were together just praying for the president in D.C., knowing we were going to be with him that evening and not knowing it'd be for hours. Matter of fact, he took all the people that would go up to the upstairs areas that nobody had ever seen. I told him I couldn't believe he did that. But in that meeting, you shared with him at the table that Robert Morris said, you know, and this is just talking to all the preachers sitting there together. And I had just complimented him, if you remember, on how amazing it is how they loved each other when they were actually taught to not even like each other because they came from different, let's say, sectarian positions. And you shared that Robert said, you know, most people that come up here to have dinner with the president or be with him in the White House, they, they always come wanting something. And we've all come up here because we want to give him prayer. That's right. And love and concern for his well-being and, and for the country. And you told the president that. And that you wish that he could hear what these people think. And the president walks up and says, I want all of you who want to just, you want to tell me something, just tell me. And you remember there was just a procession of people speaking to him. Is that the truth? That's the truth. It they was shared their heart, didn't they? It was spontaneous. He called uh, his attendant over and said, I want a microphone. And they brought him the <laughs> microphone and he stood up. I didn't know what he was doing. He said, will you, will you go up there and, and, and say something and say this? I like this. I need to hear this. And, and it was, and I said, we, and I mentioned Robert Morris saying such, we got on our knees in the hotel earlier that day, all of these pastors got on our knees right, right in Washington, D.C. and started praying for the president. And I'm telling you, it was <laughs> unbelievable. And it went on and on. And I was telling the president about that. And that's when he said, I want to hear more. I want to hear more. And he goes up with that microphone and he starts inviting different ones. He invited you or you were invited to come up and say something. And, and it was one of those moments <laughs> where you're like, is this a church service or is this the White House? And it actually became both. I, I want to I want to tell everybody what 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 happened when he's motioning to me while all of them are speaking. You you might have seen him. He's telling me get up get up get up, and so I did. And you're sitting right by him, and I'm, I, I watched you. And, and there were some people there that took pictures of what's going on. And I I said, sir, I'm not going to go up here. I just want to talk to you and Melania. And I want to tell you that you said something to me that my father never said. And you said mm -hmm. it to me. And you said it right after I'd had probably as serious, if not the most serious discussion you ever had. And it was correction, sir. And I remember thinking, as we were in the suburban together, even though I prayed for you, I thought, I don't know if he'll ever speak to me again. Because after I'd spoken to you, I prayed for you. And you, you're sitting right there by him. And you're watching him staring at me. I think you even said you watched Melania and she kind of teared up. You said it was, it was very moving how she was moved. And I said, sir, when I got out of the suburban and walked around, not knowing if you would say, James, uh, you know, goodbye. And maybe you'd never talk to me again because I'd been so forceful. But when I walked around, you reached over and you pulled me up to your chest, sir. And you leaned over in my ear and you said, man, I love you. I love you. And I'm looking at him, Jensen sitting right by him. And I said, sir, my father never told me that. Mm. You told me something I never heard. You have no idea what it meant to me. And then you repeated it two times going up the steps to the plane. Man, I love you. 
You shouted it to 50 people who were guards and SWAT team members and staff. Man, I love you. I said, sir, you have no idea what that meant. Now, Jensen, am I telling the truth about how he responded knowing that he'd been through, and you know the seriousness of the discussion that we had. Right. And you know his response to it had an unbelievable impact on all the church leaders. I think it's so important for people to hear conversations like this because it's so frustrating sometimes when you watch the, narr the narrative of news networks and the, and the constant uh, badgering and attacks that this man, his wife, his family are under. And then we get criticized as faith leaders saying all you're there for is, is a photo op. Well, actually, no, the photo op probably hurts us personally. Uh, but um, it's, a, it's, it's an honor. It's an honor, a, a high honor. We're there because God put us there. And I've watched you and I've watched others speak the word of the Lord. I've done it. To the, to the president, Paula White Kane has done it in so many ways. I've walked out of the White House on several occasions with just stunned, stunned at what just took place as hands were laid on and words came forth and, bled and, and just the presence of God. And it's the most unusual thing. And, and I, I, would, I just want people to hear that this is not some game to us. You, 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 you know, I'm 58 and you're a little bit older than I am. We don't have time to play games. We're not, we're not in this for some kind of personal whatever. It's about our children and our children's children. And it's about freedom and it's about this nation. And if we don't take a stand and we don't vote, see, if we vote, we win. If we don't vote, we will lose this election and lose freedom, That's I right. believe, That's in, right. a, in a tremendous way. So I'm praying, James, and the words that you spoke that night, and not just that night, I, I could name three or four other times that it was strong as, as it could be, but on target, and it moved the president. It moved him. It moved his wife that night. And, and it's because he has an ear to hear. He has a profound respect for men of God, women of God, people of faith. He never pretends to be something he's not. I love that. That's so refreshing. He might, he might even have a cuss word slip out every once in a while, and he'll always apologize. But he, he never pretends. And I think God can do something. With, somebody said to me one time, but God couldn't use Donald Trump. He's so flawed. He's such a flawed human being. Well, and I don't need to be on this screen and you don't need to be on this screen because all God uses is flawed human beings. That's right. I love you, Jensen. Father, thank you for Jensen Franklin. Thank you for him showing me Jesus so clearly, so faithfully, so fearlessly. And Lord, thank you for allowing us to come together with other church leaders and true shepherds with your heart and be willing to share your truth with anyone with ears to hear and even to share it with a trumpet blast when people seem to be turning away from it. Lord, we're gonna hold up the standard of truth unwavering. We don't wanna beat people up with your truth. We wanna hold it up as a radiant beacon. And that's what we've done with this president and all the advisors around him. And we've watched the transforming effect. It's not totally complete yet. We're not finished products, but Sorry. we're like clay seeking to be yielded in your shaping hands so we can become vessels of honor. We believe that's what Mr. Trump wants, President Trump wants. We believe that's what the cabinet members around him want. And so many that are advising that we know so well, they want your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven and believe it's possible. So God have your way and your will on November the 3rd when we make a decision between light and dark, good and evil, right and wrong, freedom or bondage, dependence on you or dependence upon Caesar or Pharaoh or something other than you. God, help us. Help us to commit our total will and way to you. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name. Jensen, thank you. Thank you. I love you and your family, buddy. James, can I say one more thing? Yes, sir. 25 million evangelical Christians have not registered to vote. 
that could win the whole election. Can I challenge every person listening to me? You can register online, my, my, uh, faithvotes.com, my faith votes. You can register today and let your voice be heard. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Thank you, Jensen. Great words, great counsel, great advice. Thank you for being with us. Thank, Thank you. all of you. Thank all of you for watching and listening. <laughs>